Hello, hello, hello. Wonderful question. Can people speak in tongues today like they did during Bible times? The answer to that question is yes. But hold up, hold up now. Hold up just a minute. What do I mean by tongues? Or what do you mean by tongues? Or what does the Bible mean by tongues? I can speak in the English tongue. My Spanish is a little rough, but I know other people who can speak in two or three different tongues. I, I know one person that can speak in the English tongue, the Spanish tongue, and uh, they can speak a little Japanese. A friend of mine is down in Pensacola. He can, he can speak in all three of those. And, and you got a lot of other people out there who are flowing in five or six different tongues. Now, you may be asking yourself, what, what do you mean? Now, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about real tongue speaking like what you see on TV or what you see when you go to the churches. Uh, I'm talking about Bible tongue speaking, okay? I'm addressing what the Bible talks about. I'm not addressing what you see on TV or what you see anywhere else because let me tell you something. This idea of tongue speaking has lost its meaning of what it really is. And, and let's just let the Bible tell us. Look at Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost, a very famous time, the Bible says, beginning in verse number 1, now, we're going to read together, verse 1, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. And that suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a violent rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire. And it was it distributed among them, and it rested upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them other utterance. So... In this case, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says these people on the uh, uh, who were gathered together began to speak in tongues. The apostles, they began to speak in tongues, and the Holy Spirit enabled them to, uh, to be able to speak in tongues. I agree wholeheartedly. But let's keep going. Look at verse 5. Now, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, that is the tongue speaking, when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them were hearing them speak in, now watch this, in his own language. These people on the day of Pentecost, so you got these 12 apostles over here and these 12 apostles are speaking in tongues and the people listening to the apostles in Acts chapter 2, verse 6, they said they were surprised and they were confused because they heard these men speaking in their languages. Let's keep going. <clears throat> verse 7. And they were all amazed and astonished, saying, why? Are not all these speaking Galileans? Now, why is that important? Because these men that were speaking were from Galilee. There was no way that they could have known all the different languages who were gathered, to, gathered on the Pentecost. And these people knew that. In verse number eight, these people asked a question. They said, "How if these men are Galileans, how is it we hear each one of them speak in our own language where we were born? Some, some translations say our own tongue where we were born. Meaning this, if uh, these people came from different areas and the area that they came from, they heard the apostles speaking in that language where they were born. And they said, how is this possible? These men are Galileans. And you want to know all the different tongues that were on the day of Pentecost? Look at verse number nine. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, uh, districts of Libya around Serene, visitors from Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, and Arabs. We hear them speak in our tongues the mighty deeds of God. He names all of these different languages and said, these are the tongues that we hear. Let me tell you something. There has been a confusion in religion because of the translation of one of those translations was the King James Version. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the King James Version, whatever the intent was behind those men translating the Bible, I'm not questioning but what I'm saying is, when the King James Version 
inserted the word um, chapter 14. When the King James Version inserted the word unknown in front of tongue, that's what sparked a lot of confusion. That's why most of your modern translations do not have an unknown tongue in the Bible. They took the word unknown back out. And if you look at your translation, and if it has unknown, notice that it is in parent. I mean, notice it's italics. It's different from the other word beside it. Why? Because it really doesn't even belong there. Okay. There's no such thing as an unknown tongue. The, a tongue is an actual language or a dialect. What makes a tongue unknown is the is, is if a person who is sitting in that room is not familiar with that language. If a person comes to our congregation who knows Spanish, and we have a half audience of Sp uh, Spanish people and a half an audience of people who speak English, if that guy gets up there and preaches in Spanish, that language is going to be unknown. It's going to be an unknown tongue to us because we don't know the language. And it will take a miraculous act of God for us to interpret it. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning with verse number, let's jump down to verse um, verse 29. Well, let's back up and get the whole context. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 26, he talks about everybody having a psalm, everybody wanting to preach, and everybody speaking in tongues. And in verse 27, he says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or three, or by two at the most three. That is a language. If somebody's going to speak in a different language, it should be at least two or at the most three. And then in the same verse, he says, and somebody has to interpret it. And verse 28 says, if it's no interpreter, he must keep silent in the church. If a person is speaking in a language or a dialect that no one in the building understands, there has to be an interpreter to relay the message to the audience. If there is no interpreter, God tells that person to sit down and be quiet. There's only one kind of tongue talked about in the Bible, and it's an actual dialect. If you hear somebody speaking in anything other than an actual human dialect, because ain't no unknown tongue, ain't no heavenly language then you may need to question, are they being sincerely misled? Do they sincerely believe that they are speaking in a tongue? Or is there some confusion somewhere with their understanding of the scriptures? Just take the verses I read and go back over them. Can, speak, can people speak in tongues? Yes, people can speak in tongues the Bible way. But the way the Bible describes tongue speaking is to be an actual dialect, not some of the things that you hear coming from television today. Peace out. Y'all have a good day.